So today's workshop is going to be around designing with patterns. Uh, if you're obviously familiar with the latest updates in WordPress patterns, uh, at least in 6.3, and from what I understand, 6.4, uh, are going to play a significant role in how we build WordPress websites moving forward. And so uh, I'm a fan of patterns. In fact, I liked patterns before they were even patterns. Um, what is that? I was I was into country before country wasn't cool. Uh, I think, I don't even know what we called them back in the day. I know the Genesis uh, team had a thing and they call them collections, which is basically a group of uh, blocks put together. And somewhere along the way, patterns became the name and so here we are. So today we're going to be uh, designing with patterns. Uh, I'm going to be using the Frost WordPress theme. Frost started, gosh, over two years ago as a full site editing block theme. It was experimental, uh, which meant uh, it was used mainly for educational purposes and to follow along the project. And somewhere along the way, I had the great idea to uh, approach our product team and say, hey, we should make this um, uh, available for everybody. Put it up on the wp.org theme directory and make it production ready. So uh, I think it was along with 6.2. Uh, right after the 6.2 release, we called Frost 1.0, uh, removed the experimental tag. And so what we're working with today is the Frost WordPress theme. So that being said, I am going to uh, we're going to run this in a couple, couple different parts. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the site editor just to give some context before I just jump right in. Uh, this will showcase everything that's uh, in 6.3, which arrived yesterday. Uh, so if your screen looks different than mine, likely you need to do an update if that works for you, um, because there's a lot of great stuff in WordPress 6.3. A lot of it has to do with patterns, and so I'm excited about that. So uh, I'll also kind of do a quick walkthrough because uh, we're speaking about design uh, around global styles and just how some kind of high level elements can be changed um, within the site editor. And um, we'll walk through some patterns. I'm going to build some patterns. Uh, watch, you guys can watch as I build and uh, we will, <clears throat> excuse me, do that. And you'll have some uh, chance to do some questions along the way. And then lastly, I want to introduce. Um, something that I think a lot of people, and I'm looking at my friend Jeremy because he's here and he loves the idea of this, but uh, syncs patterns. Uh, and as uh, people who build for uh, clients, sync patterns can become a very powerful tool. Uh, and I'll give you some context and background information there. So that being said, I'm going to just go ahead and share my screen and kick things off. Uh, I'm going to share my browser so I can leave the chat open. Uh, so I can see that. And so if you have any questions along the way, feel free to just um, put the questions in the chat and I'll try to kind of uh, double dip between what I'm demonstrating and also seeing the questions. Uh, one more last piece of housekeeping. This is being recorded and we're going to be uh, using that recording to publish on our YouTube channel. Uh, so if that affects your decision to go on or off video, uh, it, it doesn't matter to me if you want to stay off, that's totally fine, but just wanted to be upfront and let people know that this is being recorded and will be used for the replay. So that being said, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen and Google Room. And uh, if somebody could just in the chat, just do a quick thumbs up uh, whether or not everything is good. You all can see my screen. That would be awesome and helpful. Thank you, Abby. OK, so uh, we are in, let me actually back out of this just to give better context. I am on, uh, and I do this often, uh, I am on the frostwp.com uh, website. And so we're going to be doing this on the live site. So uh, at the end, I should hopefully remind myself to undo all the changes that I've done. So uh, we are in the dashboard here, WordPress 6.3 Gutenberg plugin is not active. So we are just running WordPress core. And uh, I'm going to go in here through appearance and editor and what this does is this takes me to what's called the site editor. This has looked a little bit different. Uh, I can't remember if it was between 6.1 and 6.2 when they wrapped this uh, in the sort of the sidebar, the dark sidebar design that you see now. Uh, but this is the site editor. And over the course of the last couple of versions of WordPress, these links here in the sidebar have grown. It originally was meant to just uh, help you build the website. But now through that, they've exposed more of those capabilities. Um, 
such as navigation and styles, which is, of course, uh, style variations, um, the ability to edit, create and edit pages as well. Um, I know posts is something that might be coming. And uh, templates, obviously, this is where you could build and manage templates that are used on your site. And then, of course, patterns, which I think in 6.2 was called library. Uh, and we'll I'll talk through a little bit of those changes there. So, so this is the site editor here. And I'm going to just go ahead and click on the right-hand side, and it kind of brings in this different view. And in the upper right-hand corner is a circle here, which, which is called styles. This takes you to the global styles panel. And uh, for people who are designing their sites, this is sort of things at the highest level. This is not on this panel view. Uh, we are not affecting things that are sort of on a block or granular level. There's an opportunity to do that here by clicking on blocks which then allow you to customize the look and feel of specific blocks. We're not going to do that in this one. And so everything that we see here in global styles has been set up through the themes theme JSON file. So the theme JSON file inside of this frost theme is a sort of comprehensive, uh, it's kind of like a style sheet, not really, uh, but what it really does is it taps into the WordPress API system and allows theme builders to determine uh, all sorts of things, colors, fonts, spacing, um, things of that nature on the global level, but also on the block level. So if I click here on typography uh, and go to text, you'll see here that this then gives me a UI to change the, the base uh, font that's used within the theme. Right now, I've got it set for outfit, medium font size 20, and so on. And so this is all set up through theme JSON. And why this is different and how this differs from a style sheet is that this is theme JSONs connected to the UI that we see here. In other words, a style sheet wouldn't allow sort of connectivity here to show inside of these things. And so as I back up a little bit, we'll see the colors. Uh, this color palette, as I click through, uh, has a base, which is white, a black, which is a contrast, and then these two primary and secondary blue colors. And then in Frost, I've just sort of notated a gray color called neutral. And again, these five are set up through the theme JSON file. As a developer, you can change that inside of theme JSON or as a user there, you see these three little buttons here. This opens this up a little bit and you could customize this. Like in, for instance, if a user or as a developer, you wanted to change that primary color to blue and you set it to teal, then everywhere that that blue is used throughout the site, will then become teal. Obviously, we're not going to do that because uh, that's not what we want to do. But just to sort of illustrate, I'm going to reset back just to illustrate sort of how this works. And the layout is just talking about the predefined widths, a um, little bit less important here, but uh, the predefined widths that we want, uh, content area and there's certain blocks that support a wide alignment. So if you think of like a um, block quote or an image that you want to kind of stretch outside of the typical uh, content view, you can do that. And this 1200 is the width of whatever you set there. So I'm going to, okay, just make sure I go through here. Um, uh, one more thing, and I'll click this browse styles. Uh, the Frost theme comes with eight preset style variations, and each one is uh, handled by a themed, or, well, a JSON file that's found within the Frost theme. If you want to be uh, offered this sort of thing inside of a theme, you have a uh, styles folder. Inside of that is a simple JSON folder. Kind of works like a parent-child theme setup, uh, where the the theme JSON is sort of the um, the, the do all and then anything you want to deviate from that. And so in this case, I've just created seven other different colors. Uh, and so if you click through here, you can see that these are different. Now, for instance, if I click on magenta and hit save, which I will, and you go to the actual frost website, which is right here, uh, everything, be the blues become the magenta. And so uh, I'm going to actually back up and undo what I did so that we don't affect the live site. Go up here, and I thought there was, well, we'll just do it this way. 
Okay, so uh, before I move forward, does anybody have any quick questions kind of per what I just walked through? Again, use the chat, just drop them in there. Uh, I'll look along the way. Otherwise, I'm going to jump right in. I do not have front page. Um, Alisa, we can talk about that in build mode. Uh, I don't know if that's specific to using Frost or just in general. Frost has a front page template, um, which is what is being used here. Uh, da, 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 let me close out of here. Okay, so uh, I am, and I'll actually click this and give it to you live. This is a link of the four patterns that I'm going to go ahead and build. Let's see that I put something up. And so um, going back to the, we have a, a, port, a sample portfolio pattern. And then as you scroll down, you can see here's a section uh, for testimonials. And below that, we've got a simple call to action. And underneath that, we've got a footer. Uh, the reason there's two footers is because uh, one is the actual site footer for Frost, the actual website. And this is just an extra pattern that I've got inside of the content. So it's just showing on top of the other one. Uh, and so looking at the portfolio, uh, and I'm going to move through this relatively quickly. Uh, happy to answer questions along the way. Uh, the replay will be on the YouTube channel. So for those who want to go back and sort of dissect what and how is how it works, um, you can. And so what I'm doing here, you can see my tabs across the top. I've got a blank page here. And so I'm going to go back and forth between this is the page that I've already got set up. And then here I'm going to build it so I can just go back and forth for reference. And so inside of this, I'm going to set this to full width. And there's a reason I'm going to do that just because if it would make it makes it easier if you want to change the background to a different color. And so this whole section, I generally wrap all of my patterns inside of a group, sort of like a wrapping container. And so uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a group block first. I always start with that. Uh, I'm going to select this and right here. So this is the group block and there's an alignment thing here. I'm going to set this to full width. So it's going to set that white section uh, to full width. And as we're looking at this, uh, you can see we've got a heading here and then a paragraph text below it. And so I'm just going to add the heading block. We'll call it portfolio. Uh, I want that centered. After that, I think there was a little bit of text. I'm just going to do a copy and paste to keep this simple. Okay, so now we've got the heading. I'll maybe make this a little bit bigger. I don't remember exactly what it was, but we'll set the font weight a little bit thicker. And you can see right now there's a little bit of space here between the heading uh, and the paragraph. That's because there's a thing called block gap. And what it does is it adds a predefined number, in this case, uh, 30 pixels for frost in between every block. And so what you can do, uh, and let me double check that this is what I did here. Yeah, so I put these in a group so that way I can control the, the distance in between the two. Uh, another way of doing that would just be to set top margin on here to something different uh, in the spirit of showing you a different way. If you go to dimension, so I'm inside the paragraph block, I'm going to select margin. I'm going to go to top and you can see I'll do this. I'm using the presets that are available in Frost. Uh, I'm, maybe I'll just make this 10 because I'm going to do update and then we'll go to the live page really quickly just to see where we're at. Okay, so this is how things look. Now, when I have a group block that wraps everything, I generally, first thing I do, and I forgot to do it here, is just add padding just so we don't have that issue. This is a 30 pixel gutter padding on each side. I'll do update again. And then we can say, okay, this feels a little bit better. Uh, now below that, we have this here. And basically we have one column on the left side, one column on the right side. Uh, I will go into list view over here. You can see we've got a columns block. We've got two columns. 
Uh, on the right hand side, I'm using a gallery to show these nicely in a in a um, a little grid view. Over here, we've just got a heading, a paragraph, and buttons. You can see things kind of light line up or light up. Uh, and so uh, I'm just going to go over here. I'm back inside of this. I'm going to add that columns block. We'll call it 5050. And what I'm going to do is I'm selecting the whole columns block. So this is both columns. And I'm going to change the alignment to 1,200 pixels. What that'll do is sort of serve as like the inner. Uh, that would be from over here to over here. That's the, the wide width. And so on the left side, I'm going to just do a heading. We'll call this sample project. Oops. Well, I will do a copy and paste over here. I will hit enter, which puts me into the paragraph block. Now I've got a paragraph. And then as we can see, I want to do a button. So I just hit enter, add a button. We'll just say view project, pretend that this goes off to a different page. Now on the right hand side, uh, I had mentioned that we were going to use the gallery block. And I'm going to go through here. I've got some these set up. Add to gallery. So now I've got two. Let's just do two more. Oops, I'm going to pick a different images, but that's OK. So I'm going to insert the gallery. And then however you choose to arrange the gallery, I will click Update. And we'll see where we're at here. So we've got it's starting to look a little better, right? But this is part of the design process. It's understand it's getting your elements on page and then sort of designing them to to essentially be where you want them to be. Uh, now, on this example, you can see that this left side is centered top to bottom. Um, and so inside of the columns block, if you select columns, there's this little button. So this is the vertical alignment for the columns block, as you can see, uh, if I wanted it down at the bottom, I could. Uh, we want to have it centered, so I'm going to have it centered. I'm just going to click Update, and then we'll just see how things look. Things are looking a little better. It feels like this section here is too close to the um, up here, so what I'm going to do is I've got the columns block selected. I'm just going to add some top margin to that. Uh, again, I'll do this so we can kind of see how this works. So we're going to set it to medium, which is 60 pixels. And oops. <laughs> now we've got some more space. Now, for some reason, maybe I don't like this arrangement in the gallery. Uh, I believe there's a way to. Um, there we go. We want to do columns. So I will update. And here's now my column. So for instance, maybe this is. Maybe you're even using this not as a portfolio, but uh, like a real estate listing, and you want to show some houses. And inside of the house, there's some pictures that you want to have in a gallery where, you know, maybe sample project is the the address, a little bit of a description, and this says like view house, and these are just four sample images. So that is basically the portfolio. A little bit different because I didn't quite style it the same, but we can see here that we've got a portfolio. Now one. One gotcha, and I'm going to double check to make sure uh, there's no comments here. So if I were to make this responsive, the way WordPress columns block works out of the box is that it just stacks them left on top of right. Uh, in, a, in a situation like this, uh, maybe we want this right side to be stacked first. There's no at, right now, there's no a core um, option to do that. However, what I've done inside of the frost theme is create what's called the block style, which basically means over here, there's the option to do reverse. And what that does, I'll click here. It adds a class called is style columns reverse to the columns block, which means it reloads the order of the columns. So in this case, because I want this right side to come first, if I were to hit update and uh, refresh, let me pull this off so we can see. As I go responsive, you can see then it loads here at the top rather than underneath it. So uh, my guess is that uh, the next question might be, will WordPress support more responsive controls like that? 
I'm guessing at some point, yes, uh, there are very easy ways to do something like this. And so that's an example of that. So before I move on to the next pattern, were there any questions relative to what I did here? Um, just from a design perspective, if for whatever reason you wanted to change things up, uh, I am on the button block. I can change that button color to anything I want. In fact, if I wanted to make it an outline, I could do that. So a uh, lot of, and this is all really what's new to WordPress, not specifically 6.3. There's more controls in 6.3, but over the last several versions, we've moved closer towards this um, UI that allows people to design within WordPress's backend previous to sort of this new editing experience altogether. Uh, we we're really just playing with uh, a glorified version of like a Google Doc uh, with the tiny MCE editor, or if you wanted to go in and use HTML and write HTML and CSS and stuff like that. Um, this really helps um, give uh, people a way, even just changing colors, not that we want to go white, but um, you can just see all of the things. and. Uh, you know, there's the typography settings. If you want to uppercase, lowercase, you can change the thickness uh, of things. You could change the sizing of things. And so, don't know how to spell. Uh, for some reason, this is too big for you. And this is really all relatively new to WordPress. Uh, we've seen iteration of this over the last couple, couple of years, but uh, we're now at a point where designing full-on pages uh, and websites, for that matter, have become really, really easy. So I'm going to take a quick second to look at the chat just to see if there's any questions. Otherwise, we'll go on to the next pattern. I don't see anything. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. Uh, so underneath the portfolio, we have this section here. This is what we're calling a testimonial section. Uh, and looking at it, this has a group lock that has got the black background. Uh, and then inside of that, we've got two sets of columns that are three columns wide. And then inside of that, there's some more work to do. So I'm going to just go ahead and start working through this here in my page, because I'm going to build this right underneath. Uh, like I said, I add the group block first, which is what I'm doing. I'm going to set it to full width. I'm coming over here, changing. This is the background of that group block. Uh, and then. I'm going to just get the padding all set so that now I can add my columns. And so uh, I think we were three across, uh, and it is a little bit harder to see here. So um, so I now have, as you can see down here, there's a breadcrumb, page group, columns, column. So right now I've got this first column selected. Uh, I'm going to actually change this background to white. Clicking back over, that's what this is right here. So I'm kind of just laying the, the the foundation to get my content in. Uh, it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. Uh, and so I'm going to just do the same thing here, set another. So I'm going to basically create my three columns. And I realize I'm using the main content width here. And so what I want to do is I've got my columns selected. I'm going to change the alignment to wide, which then spreads them out. and. Uh, I'm going to do a quick copy of this just to get this in there. Okay. I'm going to hit update so we can see where we're at. Uh, it's not going to look great, but we'll get that fixed shortly. Okay. So here we've got the three columns that have the white background and we've just copied and pasted text. Maybe you've got like a doc somewhere. If you're building this from somewhere else, this is how you would do it also. Uh, clearly, we want to make some changes. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is inside of this column, uh, I believe, let me double check what I did here. I sometimes wrap them in a group just because it helps do some things. Maybe, nope, maybe not. Okay. So I'm going to add padding inside of each column. So I've got the column selected. You can see this is what I've chosen. So I'm just going to go back into each of these three columns and do padding the same way. All right. So 
I want to see what I did here. So this, obviously, you're trying to get the bigger effect on the... Um, so we're going to change this all the way up to 72 pixels. Uh, you can see it's a little bit... There's a lot of space there because I think it's using the default line height. So if we change the line height of that apostrophe, it won't have as much space in between. Uh, in fact, yeah, okay. Uh, and I also am going to zero out. Uh, Katie, I'll see your question. I'll get to that in two seconds. Uh, I'm going to zero out the margin on top of this paragraph because I think that's also causing some Yep, there we go. Uh, I'm going to click update. I'll go to the front end. We can see what this looks like. Okay, now we're looking better. Let me get to your question. How do we know how many pixels padding it is when you choose small, medium, large? Uh, fantastic question. And so what I'm going to actually do is you go back here to the column. Um, all WordPress themes are going to be different. And so Frost has what's called a um, spacing scale. Uh, and it uses t-shirt sizing. So you can see here, there's there's basically six sizes. Zero is is sort of a, you know, if you go down here, you're at zero. Uh, if you go here, it's extra small, small, medium, large, and all the way up to extra large. How the, the easiest way to know, like in a cheat way, is to select it. And then you see these little things here. Um, oh, actually, that doesn't. Uh, this allows you to do it on a custom basis. Um, for the sake of Frost, I just go in 20 pixel increments. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And so anything beyond that uh, would need to be like, if you just wanted, I don't know, 37 pixels, right? You could type in 37 pixels. Uh, the theme, as Laura points out, the theme JSON file, if you open that up, uh, there is uh, a section towards the top of the Frost theme. And I'll grab a uh, link to Frost and you guys can see what that looks like. Um, Inside of that uh, theme JSON file is the um, this. Let me actually, see if I can do this quickly. Uh, so follow with me. I'm going to GitHub, and so this is the Frost theme. I should have had this handy. Uh, so you can see right here in this code right here. Oops, that's the button. Hang on a second. I'm sorry. Here we go. Uh, inside theme JSON, you see this highlighted code right here. Thank you, Jeremy, for grabbing that. Uh, so this is how I've defined those sizes. Uh, you can also see that because we're trying to work towards like a responsive uh, out of the box thing, uh, outside of the small, I've got I'm using the clamp function, which sort of means at so basically we're going from twenty to forty to sixty to eighty to one hundred. Uh, but in smaller screen sizes, uh, maybe we don't want the 100 to be a true 100. And so it kind of reduces itself down to 60, which is the lower end of the clamp. And so what that does is, and I'll show you in a second here, what it does is it um, kind of bakes in a uh, a responsive setup. And so backing up um, to this. So I hope that, okay, I'm wondering if it will be a frost theme with various Figma designs that were from, uh, yes. And so if in Figma, if your design system is different than the 20 pixels that maybe you're like, you know, 16, 32, 48, you could just go into Frost and just update that small, medium, large to whatever you want it to be. Uh, so you can either design Figma around Frost or you could just update Frost or the theme to kind of incorporate into your design system. Cool. Uh, okay, so we've got this one done. And I'm going to actually deviate because I think there's something cool that we can show here. I was going to do it at the end, but I'll do it now. Um, if in fact, like in the case here, we've got, they're all the same. Um, well, we, the names are different. Uh, one thing you can do is I'm going to delete this column. I'm on the center column and I'm just going to delete it. And so it kind of defaults to the two. Uh, when you have a column selected, you can do something like this, which is duplicate the column and it duplicates and adds that column. So for instance, if you have like, uh, when we're, we're all done here, you could then just duplicate them across. And then, uh, and if you did it again, then you'd have four. So you could take this column, delete it. Um, so just kind of little quirky UI workflow things uh, that can be done uh, to help make things go quicker. Uh, so I'm gonna actually come down here now uh, and this is an interesting section. So what we're looking at here 
uh, is we'll call it the avatar and then the text. Uh, and so there's a little bit of, um, let me see, okay, stuff that we need to do. I'm gonna go over here. Uh, we are gonna create a row because what we're trying to do is like align these items uh, inside of a row so that they do this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create the row. And what this does is it allows me to grab the image, media library. As you can see, that's way bigger than we want it to be. Uh, let me go see exactly what I, so we've got 60 by 60. Um, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna type in 60. So now we've got this, the image block has support for border radius. So I'm gonna just change that to 60. And so we're getting there, right? Uh, I'm gonna just do a, actually it doesn't matter. So we've got, now we've got, I just have two paragraphs stacked here to the right. So, so we're inside of our row. I'm gonna add the paragraph. We'll just say, Allison Jones is her name. And, and because we want this stacked, going back, we want these stacked on top of each other. I just created groups so that they can be um, put together. So I'm gonna take this paragraph. If you select the block that you wanna group, you could do do this, which which groups that. It's Figma kind of works the same way. Uh, and so I'm gonna add another one, which then falls underneath it. We'll just say she's president. Um, Okay, again, we see that there's all of the spacing. This goes back to the block cap that I mentioned earlier, which means uh, 30 pixels in between blocks automatically happens. Uh, and so what we could do is um, we can take this group. And if we go over here to the styles, there's this block spacing style. By default, it does 30, but we can change this. Um, for whatever reason, if you wanted it to go bigger, you could. We basically want it to be zero, so it looks like the alignment. I'm gonna take her name and bold the name. And so let me go to the, the front end here. So this is what we're looking at. And I'm gonna hit update. Let's go to the front end of what we're working on now. Um, obviously there's a little bit of work we wanna do here in between these two items. Uh, I will show you list view. So we've got this row is gonna automatically include the 30 pixels in between. So we're gonna change uh, the, the, excuse me, the, um, the block spacing as well. Like if we, now it's zeroed out, maybe we want the extra small, which would be 20. See that automatically shows up. I'm gonna just change that to 10. Let's do a quick update. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, we want these two to be a little tighter. Likely, uh, we can do this simply by just reducing the line height. 1.75 is the frost default. And so, oops, not 15, 1.5. You know what, let's just go to one. Maybe that's not gonna, maybe that's gonna, that's gonna squish it too much, so. Uh, We'll just do 1.25, which might round up. Gonna hit update. And there we go. It's basically about the same. I think the font size might be a little bit different. So I'm gonna take the font size, which is 20 pixels by default. I'm gonna shrink this down to 18. This just might make this look a little, little better. We'll just fill this in. President of Frost Design. There we go. Uh, now this feels like it's a little too crammed. So I'm gonna go back to this row and change this block spacing maybe to 15. There we go. Now we're now we're pretty well spaced. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, closing on a list view, I'm gonna cheat because I don't wanna have to go through and rebuild all this again. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna delete this. And I can just duplicate this twice. Maybe the other one is called, we'll just say Allison Kelly and then Bob Johnson, right? Whoops. 
you can then change the image inside of each one. You can change the uh, testimonial inside each one. Um, uh, yes. Now, I'm pretty sure there's also duplicating uh, is easy to do. Uh, copying also, like you, what the, if you select this column block, it also copies it. I'm not exactly sure. If you do that and hit paste, yeah, it's the same thing as duplicating. Yeah. So I'll undo that. So we are now done with our testimonial section. Uh, now, say for instance, uh, your client has blue brand. So you selected the group. This is just a quick way to illustrate how you can change the colors. You can see here. Um, in fact, if you wanted to actually do a gradient, Frost has a preset gradient from the primary blue to the, the black. Uh, so you could do that as well. And let's just round this out by going to add a heading called testimonials, kind words from my people. Now, as you can see, uh, this is, we want to change the color to white because it doesn't look good black. We want to center this and I'm going to show you a snazzy way of doing something. Um, so you can multi-select blocks as we do here. And then you can see this little arrow, we can move these up. And so I'm going to add a little bit of margin to the top of this columns. Again, these two separated by the block gap, we can either group them and change the block gap, or I can just go to the paragraph and change the top margin, you know, to zero or maybe 20 is good enough. This I want maybe a little bit bolder. That's very bold, but, and this is just to, just to showcase how quickly these kinds of things can be done. So this is not my design preference, but this is just quickly what came out. So uh, that is the testimonials section. Uh, any questions there as I get ready to go to the next one? Uh, yes, Jeremy, you're, you are correct. And as people, when you start to work with uh, WordPress and all of these sort of, and discover these settings and features, there's different ways to do the same thing. Block gap and margin top and things like that are one of them. And it really does become a personal preference. Uh, relatively six to one, half dozen to another. As Jeremy pointed out, I actually prefer to group things and put them in use block gap instead, uh, just because I don't like going through the clicks to uncover the margin and stuff like that. And so it really becomes a workflow thing. Really doesn't matter which way you which way you do it. Um, uh, yes. Okay, real quickly. So Katie wants to see uh, copy styles. Um, okay, so let's just say I am going to select this first column. This is just demonstration purposes, not the way I choose to design things. So I'm going to say I've made this column now gray. And I don't know, let's just say I want to change the padding of that one column. I want to make it smaller. And I want the text to be royal blue. So now that I've got the column selected, uh, there's a thing called copy styles. And so making sure I've got the column selected, if you go here and, and do copy styles, what it does is it copies the styles that that, that particular block has. The gray background, I think the gray background will come over, the padding, the colors. And if you come over here to the next column, and do paste styles uh, once, then you've basically applied the same style to that column from the one you had copied it from. Um, so that's sort of an example. Uh, there are some use cases for it. I don't use it often, um, but it is magical. I mean, in certain contexts, the couple of times I've had to use it, I'm like, wow, that really saves a lot of time. So again, once you uncover these features, you can incorporate them into your design workflow as you see fit. And there we go. Uh, okay. My pleasure.
Okay, so this is a relatively simple block, but it's one that gets used often. This is basically just a call to action block. Uh, and so I'm going to go underneath my well-designed uh, testimonial section. I'm going to add a group block again. Uh, I set this group block to full width. And uh, I will show you something now that I see it as well. That's kind of a gotcha. Uh, but before I do that, this is inside of my group block. I'm just going to set the container up. And so I've got my padding all set. And uh, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to deviate for a second and do this. I'm going to change this background. Uh, and this is one of those things that once you understand how it works um, and why it's happening, uh, I'm going to hopefully save you a lot of time. So you see here this white space in between these two. Uh, this I'm going to inspect just so you can see it. Uh, let me get down there. So I'm down here, and you can see at the top of it, there's that orange stripe. Basically, what that's showing is the block gap margin in between the, this blue group uh, on top of it and this group down here. So it's basically doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is just adding this. You don't see it as much um, if you have a white background. I saw it because I knew it was going to happen. We'll just, because you can see there's a little bit of extra spacing there. Easiest way to do that in this case, and what I often do is I zero out the top margin. Watch what happens. It goes away. So it's a time saver because a lot of people didn't know, like, why is this extra space here and how do I get rid of it? Sort of a thing. Generally, if it, if it's kind of in a case like that, it's just because things are um, applying block gap in between these groups of layers. Uh, and so in the spirit of making sure we've got some time, uh, this here is what we're doing. We've got a paragraph here to the left and this button here to the right. Now, there's two ways you could do this. The original way was to just build two columns, right? Maybe make the left side 750 pixels and then the right side, um, what, you know, 25% or whatever. I don't like doing that in the columns block because what happens is this button needs to be aligned right. Uh, I won't go through the hassle of showing it, but when you align it right and then stack the columns block, that button goes off to the right and it doesn't look good. And so the row block uh, will do us a better service. And so I'm just gonna add the row block. Let me copy this text. This is simply a paragraph. So we'll start there. Uh, we've got the button here to the right. So let me get inside of my row. Going to add a button. And we'll just call this CTA button. Uh, so right now we're still, we get the automatic 640 pixels applied to it. And so we're going to take the row block. Uh, we're going to go to that wide width. And I'm going to do an update so we can see what this looks like. OK, so we're what this does is it has these two sections. It separates them over here by the 30 pixels, uh, but we don't want that, right? We want this to sort of have this, this look. So for starters, I'm gonna increase the paragraph size. Um, I think it's 24. And what we wanna do is if you go to um, dimensions, so width is selected. So you can see here, I only want that paragraph to be 720 pixels wide. Uh, so what that does, is exactly what you wanted it to do. It says, hey, limit this to 720 pixels. Uh, it's going to three lines, so I will actually increase that to something bigger. Now, the way the row block works is it aligns, it floats everything left by default, which is why this button here is hugging up against, the, it basically says it moves it over to the end of that 760 pixels. Uh, and so when you're inside of the row block, there's what's called the justification, and this is like flex magic. If you do space between, what it does is it just pushes everything to the outside. And because this row is set to this, um, let's see if I can highlight this, set to that 1200 pixels, it spreads it out. And I'm gonna update this and then go back here. And then it aligns it the way that we want it to. Now, let's just say in this case, uh, this doesn't look good. I want the button to be bigger. Uh, there's also inside of theme JSON, you can add like the spacing presets for buttons. And so, as you can see here, uh, I'll just do this just to demonstrate it. Um, maybe for whatever reason you like really wide buttons. So we're going to do this hundred pixels because, uh, now that feels a little bit better, right? Right. 
And, uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull this out and we we'll, can see how this responds. You can see the roadblock by default does this. And so let me put this back in. Um, so I'm going to go back to the roadblock. I'm going to say, I want this to allow this to uh, uh, wrap to multiple lines. And so by enabling that, I'm going to update this. I'm going to go back here. And we're going to assume you guys can see it. Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't. Because I'm, can you guys see this? Or is it just grabbing the original? Yeah. Oh, OK. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to make the whole thing. So now you can see it again because I put it back in the main browser. I apologize. Um, I'm just going to do this. You can see that it stacks it. It goes to multiple lines. So it does what you would want it to do on mobile. All right, let's do this. Cool. Um, I'm going to stop there for questions. Uh, I, I was going to do this footer pattern. I don't know that there's necessarily as much time as I wanted to because I went through some of these other things with a little bit of extra work. Um, so let's just open it up here at that point. Um, I can talk through this right here. In fact, let me go over to list view. Let me get down there just so you could just see. Um, so as always, it's wrapped in a group. There's columns. I've got four columns. And then I have basically just set this first column wider at 55%. Each of the other ones are 15%. And inside of them, I would add a heading and then like a list sort of thing. Uh, and you can see here at the top um, of the group, I've applied a border. Groups have what are, you know, so if I wanted that to be a different color or if I even wanted it to become pink, I could make it pink. And if you like bold, we'll do update. Uh, and again, that link I dropped at the beginning. So this is how you would get that look. Okay, I feel like I ran through a lot quickly. Uh, hopefully, a lot of this made sense. I want to leave the last 10 minutes open uh, for questions, either on stuff I've shown. How to, Can I go back and do something again? How do I tweak a style or setting on something that we've already done? Uh, or if you have just another question around patterns in general. Um, and I will leave a few minutes to talk about synced patterns here at the end, too, because this is... Um, this is what's really, really cool about it. Um, if we don't have any questions, I'll just jump right into the sync ones. Uh, otherwise, feel free to use the chat. OK, so Sherry was going to ask. OK, th this might actually be a good time to just jump right in, because we have nine minutes left. We can run a little bit long. So WordPress in 6.3 has what's called synced patterns. Prior to that, we've known them essentially as um, uh, what were they called? Reusable blocks. Basically, it was a way to take a group or a block, um, or a pattern is not what they're called, but like a group of things. And we want it, we wanted to make them reusable. So for instance, if there was like a call to action or something, a newsletter sign up box or something that effect that you had in multiple places on, on a website, basically it allowed you to change and edit it once and it would then sync it throughout the website. So you didn't have to go um, update it every single time. Now, taking a jump forward, the way patterns have worked historically is that when you go to, and I'm going to do it right here. Uh, if you go up here to the plus button, you can insert the pattern. So these are all of the patterns that come with Frost. And I'm just going to drop one in just to, to show. Uh, we'll just do this one right here. So what this does is it takes the code that's in Frost pattern file and basically puts it onto the page. Uh, and I think it's going to stick it down here at the bottom. And so all this is now is just blocks on a page and it's disconnected from everything else. And so often what we would do is maybe we would select this and say, like, create a reusable block. Um, with the evolution of things and in 6.3, they've taken the idea of patterns and calling them synced patterns and basically renaming reusable blocks so that you could have a pattern that is synced, which means anywhere on your website this pattern exists. Um, 
if you change it once, you change it everywhere. We see that right now kind of with template parts. That's like the third part of this. Three names are becoming one. Uh, so we've got reusable blocks. We've got template parts, uh, primarily header and footer, uh, and then synced patterns. They're all becoming the same thing. And so when you would edit your site normally, uh, edit your header, you would basically edit it once and it would just update everywhere on the site. Now, so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to just show how this works. Um, so I've got this group selected. This is this call to action. I've inserted the pattern from the site or pretend like I even created this from scratch. If you go to the three buttons, here's one way to build this. Uh, select here. You want to create a pattern reusable block. It, and so I'm just going to call this my CTA, and I, I want it to be synced. You could turn it off, which means it just doesn't become a synced pattern. Um, so I'm going to create a synced pattern. You can see now it's synced. It's got this little, these little purple things here. Uh, that's the designation that it's uh, a thing. I'm going to, I'm going to update my site. Now, where do we find these? If you come back over here to editor and you click on patterns up here is now a section called my patterns. And these are all the patterns that I created from the website or the back end that are, these are all stored in the database. These are not written back to the theme. So my patterns are all now saved in the database. And so here's an, here's that pattern. Um, you can click on it and edit it. The, the editing's a little bit wonky still, but, uh, and so if I have this pattern and I go place it manually in every single post on my site in the middle of a post, and then I update the copy here, what that does is it's it's a synced pattern, which means on every single post where this pattern exists, that copy will then be updated. Uh, and so there are a lot of use cases for synced patterns. Um, headers and footers are obviously the, the main ones. Um, sidebar content type of things, call to actions, things that uh, is you turn over to clients and you just want them to be able to kind of manage the copy or the call to action. In this case, maybe you want to change the, the way the button where it goes or whatever, the, or the copy on the button. They don't have to go in and change it in 37 different places. And so that's like a very quick high level version of what synced patterns are, but they're basically what reusable blocks were and what template parts um, headers and footers sort of were synced patterns before they were called synced patterns because the functionality was always there. Uh, change it once and it kind of extrapolates through the whole site. So that's a, a really quick walkthrough uh, of them. Backing up, you can uh, just kind of showing a little bit more of this stuff here within 6.3. Uh, if you want to rename it, you can do it if you want to duplicate it. You've now got a different, these are obviously disconnected from each other, but this just gives you the ability to kind of have, um, maybe there's like a monthly special that you run every, you know, so you've got 12 different ones, one for each month, but they're all synced with the instances of itself in the site. That makes sense. Um, yes. So that's a great question. Uh, Katie, let me, where did I have this? Let me go back into the page I was on. I think it was right here. Yeah, so right now this is the synced version of it. Let's just say this is in a blog post and you're like, I just wanna kind of unsync this from the rest of the group. In other words, detach them. Uh, you can go back up here and do detach pattern. What that does is it like removes it from being controlled by the synced pattern behavior. And then you can just change this one instance. Um, and then for whatever reason, and I'm not sure how this works, if you like make changes and then want to sync it, you can't sync it back. You just basically have to recreate its own new synced pattern. Uh, I know a lot of this stuff is wordy. Uh, most of it is just play with it, see how it works and understand the system. Uh, a lot of the design controls and things like that are really um, kind of built that way. It, once you understand where they are and how they work, all of a sudden it just becomes part of your workflow. So um, any other questions? Uh, and, and there's a lot here, right? There's a lot of posts that are now starting to float around around what's new with WordPress 6.3, this whole site editor. Let me just go back in and kind of click around as I'm talking. This whole site editor, um, and I, I won't do any navigation changes because, like I said, this is the live for Frost site. But this is how you. This is one way 
um, you can um, edit your menus, right? I know navigation for those who've been following in the long, the last couple of versions, uh, people who are used to the old menu screen, the menu system up till this point was a little bit harder to work with. Uh, this is now the ability to update the menu. Like I said, this is the live site, so I'm not going to, but um, so there's that you can add and create and rename menus and stuff like that all sort of through this screen. Uh, templates, this is a whole other um, conversation and not part of this talk, but could be its own. Uh, this, These are the templates that control everything on the site. So for instance, if I went to single posts, this template, this is kind of the site editing element of it. So this is the template that controls every blog post on the website. So if for whatever reason, I wanted to go in and say, I want this entry title to be, let's just, I want it big on every single page. This is what you would do. And you can see here at the top where it's a single post, this reminds you of what you're working on. Uh, so you are working on the single post template, which means site-wide this, this change, if you hit save, and then I think there's a confirm, uh, would make this, um, yeah, so you do that. It just, it then reminds you what you're doing so you know exactly what you're up to. I'm going to back out of here because I don't want to make that change. Uh, patterns, we talked about styles. This is just another way to to see the style variations that exist. Again, these are using the variations that are found within. Um, I talked about it and I got there before and I'm going to do it again really quickly since this is a design one. I'm going to go back to that GitHub page that Jeremy linked to earlier. So this is the Frost theme. It's free. It's on GitHub. It's on the WordPress.org repository. Um, I'll actually do this. This is a link to it. Uh, so I mentioned there's a styles directory here. If you click on that, these are basically the JSON files that um, control the other seven variations. The default blue is part of the main one. So for instance, if I click on magenta, everything inside of this basically trumps the parent um, theme JSON file. So all I've done in this case is just basically reset the color palette, which is more or less just changing these primary and secondary colors from the blues to the magentas. Uh, and then the duotone filters, I've also just changed those also. So that's sort of how style variations work. Uh, yes, I I am a nut when it comes to tidy code. Everything's perfectly indented. I'm just a perfectionist to a fault. And so um, 17 years ago, when I forked my first theme, the first thing I did was basically, because it was a complete mess. The spacings were off, the tabs were off, everything was just off. So I went through and reset all the indentation so that I could see it all um, nicely. Uh, so because I haven't done save changes, this won't actually apply on the front end. Um, just wanted to just look through uh, while we're here. And since we're kind of at time, uh, I'm back into the global styles here. I had talked about being able to do things on a block level. Um, this is inside of the UI. This is where you could do things like change the certain styles and settings for each of the blocks. So like I'm in the buttons block, if for whatever reason I wanted, you know, all of my buttons to be really big throughout the entire site, I could change that all here. All of these changes that we're making inside of the um, global styles, those changes get saved to the database. None of this stuff right now gets saved back to the theme and that's done on purpose. Um, so let's just say I were to save this, it would basically mean every button on the site looks like this. The green would also take effect. Uh, and because I wanna make sure I don't do that, you can, I believe there's the, oh, I haven't saved it yet, but if this were to have been saved, you can uh, restore defaults. There's a third option here, which basically just wipes out everything you've done. Like, so if you had a person come in and like mess a bunch of things up, you can just click that re basically reverts back to whatever the theme has. In Let's just do that, right? Let's live on the wild side. So, so now we're in the green, we've got those big buttons. This is the live frost site and I'm freaking out because that's not what I wanted. So I'm gonna go back and 
Let me refresh my hey, screen. Brian, it's the button next to it. It's the little clock between where you're at and the eye. Um, oh, oh, now it's revisions. Okay. Duh. Yeah, revisions. Okay. <laughs> Laura, thank you so much. Laura is part of the uh, education and training and documentation team. It used to be under here and I'm like, where is it? Uh, so these are the revisions. I want to revert it all back because that's obviously not what I want. Thank you for that, Laura. I, I did not know that that change existed because I've never had to do that uh, until now. So Perfect. So this reverts it all back to the default Frost styles and settings. I'm going to stop sharing my screen uh, and I'm going to just uh, open this up again. I'm happy to stick around for a few more minutes. All of this will be available um, on our WP Engine Builders YouTube channel. Let me see if I can grab that really quickly. I'll grab a link to that. Oops, YouTube channel here for those who want to see the replay. Uh, probably by the end of this week, I'll have this one up. Uh, so again, I love design. I love WordPress. I believe in the power of block-based building and all of this stuff so much that I'm working on my own side projects, but uh, all the work that we've done here at WP Engine for Frost. Um, and while we're at it, let me see if I can very quickly grab the link to the the download link. So here is the official Frost page on the WordPress theme directory. Uh, if you use it, be great. If you could give us a five star rating, help us boost that a little bit. That'd be awesome. Um, but uh, last but certainly not least, I'm going to drop my Twitter because that is where I'm extremely active and very available. So if you want to hit me up, um, if you have questions around any of this, follow me, send me a DM. Um, we could even set up one-on-one -on -one calls if you want to just talk through some of this stuff and get very specific around how you want to use this, how you do use this, what problems you're having. Uh, it is our job here at WP Engine to help work with people in the community. So uh, it is a pleasure for us to do this, and I love it. So that being said, uh, come to a close, unless anybody has any questions. Again, uh, feel free to either raise your hand or just drop it in the chat. Uh, this will be posted by probably end of day Friday. Um, and again, I realized I went through things a lot of quickly, um, and I can slow it down on one-on-ones if that's what you need. So. Appreciate everybody being here and have a great day, everybody. Thanks again.